Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Laura. And we are Pretty Gritty Campers. And today I'm going to show you how to hook up a vintage trailer for travel. So we are on our way to Minneapolis. We're visiting my sister-in-law, Paula's sister. When we first got a travel trailer, especially a vintage one. We didn't know how to hook it up or anything like that. So we wanted to give you guys a beginner friendly way or how we hook up our trailer and hope that it helps you guys. Let's get to it. When it comes to the process of getting ready to travel, uh, we both have a whole set of chores that we need to do. My chores usually involve the outside of the camper. So for this video, I will probably be the only one you see for the rest of the time. The very first thing that you need to do before you actually hook the camper onto your vehicle is you need to make sure that everything's packed up. The reason you load up your vehicle before you attach it to the camper is because otherwise when you're attached to the camper, you are going to have limited space from the back of your vehicle. I can't open my tailgate when the camper is attached to it, which would make it a lot more difficult to load up. So everything is loaded into your vehicle. The next thing you need to do is you need to put the hitch onto your vehicle. Our trailer is 8,000 pounds and so I got a hitch with a few extra thousand pounds just to make sure I played it safe. So this is graded for 10,000 pounds. What you're going to do is you're going to slide the hitch into this square part here. There is this rod and this pin passes through. You put the metal rod through that hole. You need to make sure this square part has only one hole. You need to make sure it aligns with this hole here so that you can get the rod through. And then this tension pin goes through and you push it all the way until that little loop is hugging the outside of that rod. And now this is held in place. And that's the only way that this hitch is held to the campers through that rod right there. Hopefully it holds. The next thing you need to do is you need to lift the camper so that it can connect to your vehicle. Different type of campers have different types of levels. Ours has three main ways that it levels. Two stabilizing legs on the left and on the right side. That helps us get the tilt of the camper this way. And then we have our main jack at the front of the vehicle. And that helps us level the camper forward and back like that. Other campers, they will have stabilizing legs on the back. We don't have that. We have just our wheels. And then we have what I call Legos. <laughs> they stack on top of each other that then we pull the whole vehicle and it lifts on top of them. These stabilizing legs and the primary stabilizer up at the front, those are what need to be lifted in order to attach the vehicle. Quickest way to raise each of our stabilizing legs is with our drill and our drill attachment. attachment. Now, not all campers have this. When we first got this camper, it had just this method where you push this on here and then you have to hand lift it. The weight of the camper is currently being held up by our stabilizing weight. So it's not powerful enough to handle that weight. It, it will just twist in place because there's so much weight on the stabilizing weight. So I lift the front of the camper first so that then these stabilizing legs are now off of the ground and then I will be able to use my drill to quickly lift the leg. I'm going to lift the main stabilizer here. Some campers will have a hand crank at the top. We got this off of Amazon. All I have to do is press a button and for me that is pushing the up arrow. The camper will slowly lift. So now you can see that I lifted the camper. Our stabilizer leg is off of the ground. The weight of the camper is not on my stabilizing leg. So I can just put the drill right here. And boom, super fast, the leg is up. Okay, so now the next step is attaching the hitches together. I have raised our main jack so that just at eye level, you can see all of the hitch on the vehicle is going to be able to pass underneath. Two extra chores that you may want to do before pulling your vehicle is you want to make sure that you get some hitch ball lube that you put on the ball. You also want to put it on the ends of your weight spring bars. 
these aren't something you have to do every time. It helps to have somebody else here so that they can kind of direct you. We invested in this wonderful camera here. I love it because it's magnetized. I can attach it to my truck or when we are fully hooked up, I can connect it to the back of the camper. Well, I am just going to set that there and it is pretty darn sturdy. It takes a lot of pressure to lift that. Well, now I'm going to get in my vehicle. Now you can tell that this ball is not perfectly aligned underneath the hitch, but that's okay. The hitch kind of finds its own way onto the ball and you'll be able to tell if you need to adjust once you start lowering the weight of the camper onto it. Sometimes it'll just sit on top of the ball and then you'll just have to lift the camper and kind of adjust the vehicle until finally it hugs down on top of it. So you'll be able to figure that out. The next step that you need to do is this pin right here needs to be pushed back before you lower the weight of the camper on because after you lower the weight of the camper on you're going to push that pin forward and that's what causes it to hug onto hitch and make sure that it stays on there. Now that the pin is moved out of the way I'm just going to lower the hitch back down. The weight of the camper is going to start resting on the hitch of the vehicle. The hitch kind of found its own way and now you just want to make sure that you are lifting until this clears, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna catch on any speed bumps or anything else on the roads. So you just keep lifting until it won't lift anymore. As soon as I lower the weight of the camper down, I push this pin forward, and now from underneath it is hugging the ball on the hitch of the vehicle, which isn't completely detrimental, but it is definitely unsafe and you could lose your entire camper. You are going to put a pin through these holes here to make sure that this doesn't wiggle back off of it. I use a padlock to make sure it's extra secure, and so now that's set. While we're down here, we may as well finish hooking up all of the attachments at the hitch. You have these extra security chains want to go across. So this one here on the right side is gonna come over here on the left. You'll notice that the end of the chain has this hook here. When you attach that to your vehicle, you don't wanna attach it this way. You wanna attach it this way. So now that our safety chains are attached to the vehicle, again, crossing each other, the next thing that you need to attach is the safety brakes. This is kind of like if you've ever ran on a treadmill, the piece that attaches to your shirt so that if you fall off the treadmill, it pulls the pin and the treadmill stops. Basically the exact same thing. So this is going to hook onto your vehicle. If the camper were to come unattached, the brakes of the camper would then clinch so that the camper doesn't go flying all over the road. I have a carabiner attached to my vehicle. I just have this set to a loop and then I attach that to the carabiner. Now, if it were to come unattached, if the weight of the camper were to pull off, this pin would come undone and the brakes would initiate. Now we need to attach the electric system. This is so that when I brake, then the brake lights on the back of the camper initiate. When I turn signal, turn signal at night so that the clearance lights show on the camper. You'll notice on the electrical setup, you will see how this has a little piece of plastic here sticking out at the top. You just need to make sure that that feeds into the same fitting like you are a toddler playing with shape bricks. That will differ vehicle to vehicle. For me, the plastic slot is on the top, so I am going to slide that into place. Don't worry, we're almost done with our attachments with the hitch. We just want to make sure that we're extra safe here and following all the laws. And so this last connection is optional. It's really for windy days. These are called spring bars and I highly suggest it. I just do it every time anymore. If I hit a bump, I won't get as much wiggle. If there's a high wind, it holds the camper extra secure to my vehicle. We'll see a hole on both sides of your hitch. You are just going to lift it into place until it clicks. And when you let go, the spring bar is hanging above the ground. Now that the spring bars are attached to the hitch of the vehicle, we need to attach the other end to the camper. These 
turn here and you are going to put the chain on the end of the spring bar onto this bottom hook here. You need to make sure that when you attach it to the hook that the chain isn't twisted. You also want to try to get as short of a chain as possible. The more links down you go, the more tension it's going to cause and therefore the more stable it is going to be. So I'm going to make sure that it is first of all aligned and then I'm going to try to get it up to the hook. Now this can take a bit of work. A lot of times I will put my boot underneath and try and lift from here. Another great tip is I will actually lower the hitch back down and start lifting the camper a little bit and you'll notice that as it lifts it will create a better angle to get the chain on. Hold the loop of the chain here next to the hook then I will lower the camper from here. As I do so, this chain link will get closer and closer up on the hook so that it catches better. So now that I lifted the hitch back up a little bit so that the chain aligns with the hook, I need to use this bar here on the tip of this to lift the spring bar into place. It's where I usually put my boot underneath the bottom of the spring bar. You also need to be very careful to not have your fingers inside of the link of the spring because otherwise you're putting about 10,000 pounds of weight between your finger and of the hook and that's not great. Kind of hold it in place, being sure that your fingers are outside of the link. Holding it in place, you're going to lift until it locks into place. The spring bar is set in place there. You need to make sure that it stays secure and that will be just two of these springs will pass through these holes here. You'll know that this joint is all the way back because the holes will align properly so that you can get this through. And now that's set, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with the other spring bar. Last thing is just lifting up your hitch so that it's all the way clear. Now that the camper is completely and safely secured to your vehicle, you can clear everything out, which includes the hitch stand and then the chocks that you have on your wheel. So then from here, you just need to make sure that you are securing down, battening the hatches. We have to take down our rock guard. We have to disconnect our electric. We have to put up our step. Once you get your seat belt fastened and all your mirrors checked, you're ready to hit the road. Thanks for watching. If you would like to join us on our journey as we travel across the country from national park to national park, please like and subscribe. Thanks again.